Hey everybody, so I don't usually do this, I'm going to discuss a topic that I am virtually clueless on, which is this red camera debacle, since I keep getting comments, emails, questions, even phone calls at the store from people asking me to input, give my input on this, and I don't know why people are asking me to do that, since I have virtually no expertise when it comes to pro video equipment or the world of cameras. I'm still recording on my NEX EA50 that I bought five and a half years ago, and I will likely be using this up until the point that YouTube decides that they like to stop losing $2 billion a year by having YouTube as a website. But, eh, what the hell, let's go into it. So there are a couple of different angles that I would tackle this from. So I was reading the CEO's statement about what is in a red cam, and there were a couple of things that stuck out to me. So the first is when they talk about the intellectual property and firmware and everything, he starts talking about the ecosystem about red code technology. Now, when I look up what red code is, red code appears to be a way that you're encoding the video, which I imagine is something that you already paid for when you bought the camera, because the camera is going to be encoding the video, not the storage medium. So when they're going over how awesome and how cool and how great red code is, I can't really tell you one way or the other, because it's not like I get a lot of practice with $40,000 cameras, but that does seem to be part of what you're paying for when you get the camera. So it's almost like he's shifting the focus there. So the individual at Ginny that made these cheap packs is saying that, you know, that red did not develop this ridiculously expensive millions of dollars in invested into the into the the card he says no no we did we put a lot of money into the red code format and it sounds like he's doing what uh, I, I keep here's the thing i'm uneducated i'm a pleb when it comes to camera equipment i got that thing used for maybe a thousand bucks i think my overhead camera is a used piece of crap sony a5100 that i got for 200 dollars on ebay with a broken flash i'm clueless when it comes to camera equipment so i'm not really looking at this in terms of the exact way that the technology functions i'm looking at this in terms of how it is you're talking so if i tell you I think pizza is bad for your health, and then you respond to me and you say, no, 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 hot dogs are good for your health, here's a study. You just, you just pulled a politician trick on me. You answered the question that I didn't ask. And that appears to be what happened there, so that makes me very, very skeptical. Now, from what I see here, you technically could be correct that you have some sort of proprietary firmware or system for writing to the card, but A, what I see is that you will put a folder, and in that folder you will have all the clips in it, that doesn't seem to be that advanced to me. And B, you could just be technically telling the truth but be putting DRM in there. So another thing that people are going to do is they're going to tell you the truth, but it's going to be some out-the-side-of-their-mouth version of the truth. So if somebody asked me, what did you do to fix this board, I could say one of two things. I ripped your JTAG connector off and then I billed you $425 because you are an Apple user. Or I could say, I used the 10 years of knowledge and engineering know-how to figure out why your SPI signals for your SPI ROM chip, otherwise known as the BIOS and a PC, were shorting to ground and intermittently functioning, and then I remedied that short. And that's what I see going on when I read this. It sounds like, yeah, we do have a proprietary way of writing to the card. I'm sure you do, you know, telling it to put all the files for a clip in one single folder, like, woo. And then you also have the issue of the, of the firmware. Yeah, that, this could literally be nothing more than DRM, like Apple's T2 chip that says, oh, are you supposed to be in a MacBook? Oh, no, then pfft, get out of here. That, that technically is. They had developed that, but is that something that I'm, I'm really interested in? Now, the next part of this is going to be where he says that not all SSDs are able to handle this. We've tested hundreds of SSDs and media components over the years, and most of them have sustained right performance. Sustained performance to pass our criteria. Some Micron SSDs meet our benchmark, and others do not. Now, I would be curious to know which don't, since it seems like of the different Micron SSDs available, that they had purchased one of the cheapest ones. And that is... Again, to me, it seems like he's saying a lot of things that are true, but he's either saying things that are true that are not necessarily the questions that were asked, or he's focusing on things that we weren't really asking about to begin with. And that... Now, the thing is, the, the next part of this that, that uh, I thought about when I was looking over this issue is, honestly, how many people care? This, this seems to be a thing where most of the people who are really, really outraged here are people that don't own a red camera, will never own a red camera, have never planned to own a red camera, 
and a lot of the people that are defending RED are the people that own RED cameras. So this is very interesting. It, it, it is an interesting dynamic to me. It's kind of like what goes on with the Apple stuff, where the people that are defending Apple for not, uh, you know, for, for not recalling the iPhone 7 for an audio IC issue are the people who bought an iPhone 7 who are paying the out-of-warranty fee to replace it, whereas the people who are advocating that Apple take accountability and responsibility for the iPhone 7 audio IC issue are often people that don't own an iPhone. I find it really interesting when people advocate against their own interests on a regular basis, and it, this is something that I, th I think is just kind of, it, just from a purely uh, sociological standpoint, and just, you know, people watching, people studying thing, I find that interesting. So I've read over a lot of forums, and a lot of the people that are shitting on RED for this don't own a RED camera. A lot of the people defending RED appear to be people that own RED cameras. Just, just seems very, it's just one of those things that kind of makes, makes you wonder. The next thing about this is, Let's be real here. I had to get to this point at some point in the video. Look at the prices of these effing cameras. Um, you know, again, up here you have the this, this this thing over here where you can't add to cart. You have to call for a quote. That means you can't afford it. I have never in the 30 years I've been alive seen someone tell me call for a quote and had it be something that was even remotely within my budget. That doesn't happen. This stuff is so expensive that you actually cannot put the price on the internet or the internet will break. The cheapest one the mo that I can, um, the most expensive one that I can see is some $27,000 kit. Cameras are expensive and there is a lot of markup in the pro video world. This is not... This is not news to people that are in the industry. Perhaps this is why a lot of the people who are defending Red are people who work within the industry. You know, again, like, let's just take my piece of shit camera over here. So let's take my Sony NEX EA50. So this thing retailed for something like uh, $3,000 or so. I got it used for maybe one or $2,000. I forget. It was like six and a half years ago. So this is my camcorder over here. I have a Sony NEX EA50. I chose this camcorder because uh, it has a decent sensor, uh, good face detection, and it has XLR inputs, so I wouldn't have to worry about the audio video sync if I got a separate interface, because sometimes some interfaces work nicely when you set the buffer size low, some don't. And also, if I was visiting to do any sort of right to repair uh, coverage of any sort of events, I didn't have to bring an audio face interface with me. I could plug the XLR outputs from the mixer at any of those government rooms directly into the camera so that even if my computer failed or my audio interface failed, I had audio synced with video directly saved on the camera. I just, I, I like that. It was, it was, when I was first getting into this and I just wanted everything to work, I just thought this was a good deal. So I got this nice little large sensor camera and this thing cost about Again, like maybe 3,000 or so new. I got it for around one or 2,000 used. And this is the camera. So this camera in 2013, 14, 15, and 16 had a flash memory module that went with it. And that flash memory module that went with it is this HXR FMU128. This thing sells for $385 used. It was selling for, I think, five or $600 new. You, you can find this online for $645. This is a flash memory recording unit. This thing is like a little... 128 gigabytes. And it costs 600 effing dollars. This camera, the internal recording of it, I believe is 24 or 30 megabit per second AVC. So, so this is recording normal AVC files, not really CPU intensive, at 24 to 30 megabit per second. We're not even talking about 50 or 100 or 150 or 900 megabit per second. We're talking about 24 to 30 megabit per second. I virtually never use the internal recording on this. It's only used as a backup if I'm on the road and I'm recording something like any one of those right to repair hearings that I went over because I want to have it as a backup. But I never use the output of this thing because it is just so low bit rate. It's junk. It's 24 megabit per second. Just, ew. I use the HDMI out and I record into an HDMI capture card. So you don't have to have a very high-end piece of flash memory in order to record, but this thing has a $600, 128-gigabyte unit. Now, you may say, okay, Lewis, well, that's expensive flash memory unit. That was 2014 and 15 and 16 that they were selling it. It's a $3,000 camera fine. Yeah, I'll give you another example. So take the Sony A5100, right? So the Sony A5100 is what I use as an overhead camera. So we look this up here. Let's take a look at how much this thing costs. I got uh, one of them for $450. Actually, you could see it right here at Best Buy, $450 for the camera. And I got the other overhead one that I use above the desk for $200 on eBay because it had a broken flash. And I don't need a flash for HDMI out video recording of my desk. I have a light that I mount to the camera that I paid 30 bucks for on Amazon for that, so I don't need that. 
This camera is $450. Now let's see how much it is if you want to be able to power it without a battery. So if you want to power it without a battery, because the internal battery gives you maybe 20 or 30 minutes on HDMI out before it shits itself, you get this. This is the adapter. This is $90. $90 for the DC adapter. You can buy a charger for a MacBook for less money than this. So the, one of the most overpriced brands of laptops in the world. You can buy the charger for their high-end line. A device that is not only going to have a camera in it, but also a device that you can encode video on, play video games from, that requires a high-quality, low-ripple voltage, nice output device for its computing functions. You can buy that charger cheaper than you can buy the DC adapter for this little camera that around 8 or 9 volts draws 200 to 500 milliamps. A charger that can put out 3 to 5 amps at 18 volts for an Apple product costs less money than this thing that doesn't have some sort of funky one-wire circuit to it that is putting out 2 to 400 milliamps at 9 volts. Everything in the pro video world is expensive. Surprise! I, I, I mean, it is. That's, I, I bought a knockoff one for my camera, and if it kills my camera, I'm totally okay with that because I spent $200 on this camera on eBay. But, you know, so when we're talking about cameras that cost 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or $60,000, you know, they may take an SSD that they paid 300 or $400 for, put it through their testing and whatever, and say, here, you get free data recovery if it fails and bill you $2,000 for it. I also thought that was a little bit snide when they said, we do free data recovery. I mean, you could just give, put, you could make that little red card have a RAID 1 inside of it so that if one of the drives fails, people are unscrewed, so you'd have less need for data recovery, but I digress. But the point is, this stuff is expensive. I'm surprised, you know, again, if, if it, we're not talking about insulin here. If somebody was saying, they spiked the cost of insulin, or they spiked the cost of Dimetap, or they spiked the cost of Xanax, or whatever else, to this amount of money, I, would, I could understand. I, I could understand the argument. We're talking about a luxury brand of camera. You don't need a red camera to make YouTube videos. You don't need a red camera to film movies. I mean, they filmed, they filmed episodes of House on DSLRs that cost 5 to 15% what a red camera costs. And they looked good. There's really, you don't need this level of luxury. We're not talking about something that is necessary. So I completely understand why people are aggravated. I completely understand why, uh, you know, why people feel like they have reason to be aggravated. And when I read this statement, again, this to me, as a business owner, as somebody who's been in business for 10 and a half years and had to deal with, you know, people who will loan you money or large companies, and, uh, and I I'm used to reading statements where people are kind of talking out the side of their mouth so they could say something that's factually true but kind of lead you to their narrative. And I understand why this can aggravate people. I could totally understand why if they said you need to buy this in order to record video, people would be mad. But they're not. They're saying that you need to buy this if you want to use their ridiculously overpriced cameras that are only going to be used by a small subset of the population. And to be honest, I don't even know if these are ridiculously overpriced cameras. I know they're very expensive, but I don't know enough about pro video to know that they're actually overpriced or not. This is not my field. My point here is you're talking about camera setups where people are going to be spending twenty to $60,000 on everything after they've gotten all the accessories and everything else. This is a drop in the bucket. This is 3% this is of the budget for the camera. If you're going to be outraged at something, I'm not quite sure why people are so angry over this particular issue. It's not some, it, it's, it, you don't need this to put up a YouTube video. You don't need this to record a movie. You need this if you want every single little feature that Red offers. And you, as I've shown you many times before, I got myself up to 10,000 subscribers using a handheld $100 JVC mini camera. I used a $1,000 camera that I bought on, on um, eBay, and I will continue using this camera likely until the end of time to make my way to 860,000 subscribers. There are lots of people with more subscribers than I am that are doing videos on their three-year-old smartphone. It's not insulin. It's, so I, I understand that, you know, oh my God, they're charging a lot for something, but I just can't quite grasp why it is this is so fundamentally relevant to so many people who would have never, ever in a million years considered purchasing a red camera. I'm not saying that this would make me buy a red camera. I'm not saying that when I read this, I... But, yeah, I'm, I'm repeating myself at this point because it's late, and as I said, I likely have no idea what I'm talking about.
Consider the issue covered, and as always, I hope you learned something. If any of you know more about videography, or have half a clue about anything related to cameras, and would like to give your input, or educate me, because as I've admitted, I am completely ignorant when it comes to the professional video topic, I'd love to know what you have to think in the comments down below. If you'd like to educate me, if you'd like to provide me links or reasons that you agree with the statement that Red CEO made, or agree with the detractors, give me some interesting reading. That's it for today, and I'll see you in the next one.